funding for the January 2018 intake in the following faculties. The School of Education, BA, Adult Education, Early Childhood Education, Primary Education and Special Education. In the School of Business, we offer Bachelor of Accounts, Bachelor of Science in Logistics and Transport and many more. School of Agriculture, Bachelor of Science in Agriculture General, Bachelor of Science in Agriculture Animal Science, Bachelor of Science in Agriculture, Economics and Agribusiness. School of Humanities and Social Sciences. Bachelor in Development Studies. Bachelor in Mass Communication. Bachelor in Political Science. And Bachelor in Public Relations and many more. School of Natural Sciences, Technology and Engineering. Biosciences. Biochemistry. Bachelor in Nutrition and Food Sciences. Bachelor in Science in Forensic Psychology. And many more. School of Engineering. We have Bachelor in Electrical and Electronic Engineering and many more. In the School of Health Sciences, we are accredited with Health Professional Council of Zambia. In exchange programs for student transfer, we have Casemont International University in America. And our nursing program commences in January 2018. For details, call 0969-899-875 or 0979-966-615 or 0960-296009. Or you come in person at NPF Building, Cairo Road, 3rd and 5th floor. Or email Gideon Robert University at gmail.com. Gideon Robert University. It's a lovely good evening to our viewers across the country. This is a moment with Gideon Robert University on my school program. And today we are looking at the public speaking ethics. And to help me discuss in the studio, I am joined by Dr. K. Munda, who is actually the host and the facilitator of this new program that the Gideon Robert University has introduced. Good evening, Dr. Good evening. How are you today? I'm very fine. How are you? I'm doing fine. All right. So today we are looking at uh, public speaking ethics. Just uh, shade more light on that. Well, um, uh, public speaking ethics, uh, I think it's something we the particular Now that ethical simply has to do with other reasons for the way one conducts themselves. So in this case we talk about public speaking. We are saying when you are speaking, how do you conduct yourself? There's a certain acceptable mannerisms that in other words, I would say public speaking ethics or public speaking ethics simply refers to the do's and don'ts of public speaking. It means that there are certain things that are not acceptable for the public speaking, which the speaker, the public speaker, is not supposed to do. As you know, when he's speaking, when she's speaking, there are some limits, there are certain things that are not acceptable, there are certain things that are beyond experience, and certain things that are, that are, that are not just right to do. Either with, uh, with, with regard to speaking, with regard to every other uh, part of public speaking. It could be maybe uh, the gestures, you know, the facial expressions. Maybe you can give us some illustrations. Um, well, I, I, I I will do that as we go. Okay. But I just want to general, general, generally say what uh, public speaking is. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, uh, before I go into that, uh, maybe somebody may say that what is public speaking? Public speaking is simply the, the process of conducting uh, a speech or a presentation to an audience. So, standing before an audience or a group of people that you can public speaking in this, in this uh, space today, we are talking about. Uh, the ethics of public speaking, meaning public speaking comes along with certain ethics. Just like I think every sphere of life has a certain ethics. They are what we call office ethics. In some we can do in someone's office. You know, there are telephone ethics. There are some uh, acceptable ways of answering uh, phone calls or talking to people on phone calls. There are even issues with dress codes, which are uh, in certain uh, parts of uh, you know, society, you find some dress codes. You can't do this. There are also what we call table manners or table ethics, table etiquette, yes. meaning that there are some things you can do when you're eating and things like that. Right? So in this case, we look at public speaking. So basically, the do's and don'ts of public speaking or the manner 
reasons that the surrounding public speakers. So the public speakers are supposed to be aware of those things. All right. But well, maybe uh, to ask, do public speaking ethics apply to professional speakers or it's just to anyone, to an audience? I, I do believe that um, uh, every person who stands before a public speaker, you know, or an audience, uh, needs to be aware of uh, the ethics that might have. Because sometimes we think that uh, the professional speakers, maybe the politicians, the corporate people, and other professional speakers are the ones that pay attention to the public speakers. Whereas if I am talking to a group of people at the party, they ask me to address the people at the party, or maybe at work, or maybe at uh, the uh, 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 church meeting. So we take it that in such gatherings, I don't need to take it in the I don't need to be uh, aware of the certain things that are uh, supposed to be paid attention to in public speaking, mm -hmm. which is wrong. I do believe that as long as I'm speaking to a group of people, there are ethics to follow. Because at the end of the day, uh, ethics have a uh, lack of uh, proper ethics in public speaking would actually have uh, certain negative effects, you know. So there is an advantage when you actually speak and you you, know, you take note of ethics. Uh, basically, um, that makes the successful speaker, you know, somebody who is aware of uh, the ethics. So it applies to everyone that stands before groups of people. Okay, so maybe you can give us an, uh, an example, some of the examples of uh, the ethics of uh, public speaking. Well, they, they are the least is actually endless, mm -hmm. you know, but there are, uh, there are some that are really, really uh, uh, very, very frequent. We see them frequently in uh, um, people being misusing the way they, they, they do their presentations or uh, not taking, taking not taking things, things that are made very, very important. important. Mm -hmm. For example, For example uh, um, it is important to, to respect an audience. You know, meaning that is, I shouldn't take an audience for granted. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't just use language that may offend the, the, the audience. Mm -hmm. That what I mean by language that can offend an audience is uh, I must uh, be aware of the kind of audience I'm addressing and what is acceptable to that particular audience. There's some audiences that may be offended by maybe the kind of language you are using. What I mean here, the kind of words you are using. Mm -hmm or the kind of uh, phrases you are using. So there are certain things that are not acceptable to certain groups of people, you know? There are some people may be, so it may be, uh, it may be offensive to those people because of the type of language you're using, mm -hmm. or maybe you, are, you come out like a little not polite mm -hmm. as you're talking to an audience, or maybe you're arrogant, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and, and, and stuff like that. It is unethical to do that. But again, there are certain times when maybe an audience doesn't uh, respond to you positively mm -hmm. and you see it, maybe they are against what you are saying or they are not really following you and then you become emotional. It is unethical to be emotional when you're talking to an audience, mm -hmm. you know, and um, it is also uh, unethical to, to, to sometimes uh, become so personal because of uh, maybe the kind of discussion you are having Probably maybe you are hurt because of maybe certain things that happened mm -hmm. and you, you, you come out like uh, just lashing it out to the audience, you know? It is just not right. Mm -hmm. Ethics can also come to issues to do with, um, uh, issues to do with time. Uh, if you are given time to speak to an audience, then you, you speak beyond the time. I think that is, <laughs> I see it with most people. Yeah, but uh, usually they get away with it. You know, mm -hmm. like it's, it's just one of those things. But it's unethical and it's not right. Mm. It's actually, when you're asked to speak for 15 minutes, then you decide to speak for 25 minutes. It's just wrong. It's unethical. The reason is because it, uh, lack of uh, time management in speaking mm. is, uh, shows um, uh, what we call lack of respect for the audience, mm -hmm. lack of respect for, for other people's time. Mm -hmm. Because when people sit down in a, in a, in a gathering or a meeting, they have time. Uh, to, that they are following and they have other things to do, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you keep me in a meeting for 30 minutes when I was supposed to be there for 15 minutes, mm -hmm. you've taken part of my time. And so you don't respect my time. Mm -hmm. That's why it's unethical. 
So usually, uh, if you don't keep to time for some reasons, because sometimes it can happen that you don't keep to time, mm -hmm. uh, it's important to, to give an apology, you know? Uh, like, sorry for, uh, for, taking, for taking too long and mm -hmm. stuff like that. That shows at least you, 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 are, you understand people and you respect people, you know? But just keeping quiet about it is just unethical. It's the same mm -hmm. like even going late for, 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 for a speaking appointment, you That's know? Right. You're supposed to address a meeting mm -hmm. or attend an interview or something. You come in late and you don't have an excuse and uh, you don't say anything about it. Mm -hmm. It is also not right, you know? So such are very, very important when it comes to ethics in public speaking. The other things would be uh, things like, um, uh, even the way, the way somebody um, presents, presents uh, whatever they are presenting, mm -hmm. usually if uh, you have, a, you have a, a topic that, has, that you're supposed to follow and then while you are speaking you decide to just go off the topic mm -hmm. and uh, just speak something else that is not part of the topic, mm -hmm. it's again wrong. You know, keeping to your, to, your, to, your, to your topic is very, very important. But again, there are also issues like, um, issues like uh, there's what we call uh, spontaneity, like from the word spontaneous. Mm -hmm. That means uh, whatever you do, your speaking style, your, your gestures must flow naturally. You must not do anything that is like not natural, like maybe the way your voice is coming out. Mm -hmm. Some speakers sometimes will try to speak sometimes like somebody else. Mm. And uh, so you don't come out like the real you. So you, you try to change either your pronunciation of words, even accent. Some people will change accents, uh, you know, and uh, they're addressing a group of people. It is also not right. But um, spontaneity can also come to issues to do with even your gestures, mm -hmm. your facial expression, and all those things. They must just uh, be free-flowing. Like, it's not something that you force or you try to, you know, to uh, just to make up. You don't make it up. It has to be real. But again, before I, I stop, there's also um, the issue of uh, sincerity. Mm. Sincerity meaning that you have to be truthful as a public speaker. You know, whenever you're addressing uh, a, an audience, you have to be truthful. Meaning to say that uh, it, it is, that being genuine in what you are saying is, is very, very important. You don't uh, speak successively if you, uh, you, you, you allow yourself to be, you know, to pretend, mm -hmm. maybe to say things you are not sure of, mm -hmm. things that you may even know or you are aware that they are not, they are not true, mm -hmm. facts that you are not sure of. You know, like, as a public speaker, if you are going to give an example or quote something, maybe uh, something that you are not so sure that it is, the figures are correct mm -hmm. or it is, it's a proven fact, then you simply say, you know, 20% uh, of uh, people in Zambia, and you, you, you don't know, you don't no, one, no one did the research for that, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, the sincerity is very, very important in, uh, in public speaking. So public speaking uh, ethics cover the whole lot of things, you know? The way somebody dresses, mm -hmm. you know, there's a kind of dressing that may be offensive to a certain kind of audience mm -hmm. and uh, stuff like that, or an, a dressing that is not appropriate for a certain function and yes. stuff like that. So it also covers, um, uh, that is also part of ethics, mm -hmm. um, but also there are little things uh, like uh, simply courtesy, like saying thank you to an audience, mm -hmm. you know, and um, saying sorry when, where it's appropriate for you to say sorry and, and, and stuff like that, but also sometimes even just acknowledging the people that uh, maybe have organized that event and you, you, are the, you are the speaker or the guest speaker or something is also very, very important. So uh, there are all these uh, uh, important things that many times are left out in public speaking yeah, Let me take you back on, um, on the gestures. You know, we, 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 we see a lot of people, some people, um, they have habits, mm -hmm. like what I would call bad habits. Okay, yes. Yes. He is a public speaker, but they just have those habits, and sometimes they don't even realize that. Mm -hmm. For example, like no spoken, mm -hmm. yeah, such. How can such you know, a person it, be helped? One, one of the things about habits is that um, it's not easy to break habits. Mm -hmm. And um, you know very well there's a popular saying that um, old habits die, die hard. hard yeah. yeah. Um, it, it takes a lot of effort to, to, to quit a certain habit or to overcome a certain habit. Mm -hmm. And there are several habits that people have. Mm -hmm. 
I've seen speakers that sometimes will be tucking in their shirt in front <laughs> of an audience, speaking, you know, that's right. without even noticing it, mm -hmm. you know, or maybe trying to st uh, straighten their clothes, mm -hmm. you know, or, or playing with their, their glasses, or, you know, uh, sometimes even chewing gum, you know, <laughs> while addressing uh, an audience, mm -hmm. and like you said, poking their nose, or maybe cleaning their ear, mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. You know, it could be even women, maybe they'll be playing with their hair while talking to them about their sons, stuff like that. Yeah. So some of habits, the, the problem with habits is that it is really very difficult for the person who has a particular habit mm -hmm. to notice it because it just comes mm -hmm. to a place where it becomes so natural mm -hmm. that they don't even notice it. Mm -hmm. But if a habit is noticed, um, I, I noticed um, someone reading the news on one of the, one of the TV stations here in Zambia recently, I think two weeks ago, mm. who was, uh, you know, the way he was moving his hands on the paper that he was reading from mm -hmm. was just uh, so uh, unnatural, you know, like so mechanical and mm. was not looking so nice, mm. you know. But I, I guess the person doesn't even know that he does exactly. that and right, stuff like that. So how do we, what do we do? Because some of those habits actually would affect the ethics of your presentation, mm -hmm. you know? And um, it could be just the posture, maybe the way you are standing. Yeah. It could be in a way that, that is disrespectful mm -hmm. to an audience. I saw, I've seen people sometimes would lean on a, on a podium, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, that isn't just good to do, you know? And, yeah. and things like that. So um, a habit takes effort to break. They say that if you do something continuously, you know, in psychology, mm -hmm. It becomes a habit if you do it continuously for 21 days. It becomes a habit. Mm. But you'll be surprised that to break the same habit that you developed in 21 days, it's you need years. about mm. no about 254 days. They say. Really. So that is that means it's, it's more than the time it's spend, you spent to, to develop the habit. Mm -hmm. So it, it why so it calls for effort, a lot of effort, meaning you have to keep on trying. Um, to watch that habit until you, you get rid of it because it's very that, that is if uh, somebody who's close to you told, told you, you or you noticed it mm -hmm. there are some habits that we notice on our own okay. you know the certain times when I have um, um, I have watched a video of myself speaking mm -hmm. then I noticed certain uh, things that I'm not happy with and mm -hmm. started working on them so um, it, it's important to work on certain habits that we may know are not good yeah. all right so we um, as uh, will be looking at the effects of not adhering to public speaking mm -hmm. e uh, ethics. So this is my school. We take a short break as we return back. We'll be looking at the effects of not adhering to uh, public speaking ethics. We'll be right back. Gideon Robach University is now enrolling for the January 2018 intake in the following faculties. The School of Education, BA, Adult Education, Early Childhood Education, primary education and special education. In the School of Business, we offer Bachelor of Accounts, Bachelor of Science in Logistics and Transport, and many more. School of Agriculture, Bachelor of Science in Agriculture, General, Bachelor of Science in Agriculture, Animal Science, Bachelor of Science in Agriculture, Economics and Agribusiness. School of Humanities and Social Sciences, Bachelor in Development Studies, Bachelor in Mass Communication, Bachelor in Political Science, and Bachelor in Public Relations and many more. School of Natural Sciences, Technology and Engineering, Biosciences, Biochemistry, Bachelor in Nutrition and Food Sciences, Bachelor in Science in Forensic Psychology, and many more. School of Engineering, we have Bachelor in Electrical and Electronic Engineering and many more. In the School of Health Sciences, we are accredited with Health Professional Council of Zambia. In exchange programs for student transfer, we have Case Mount International University in America. And our nursing program commences in January 2018. For details, call 0969-899-875 or 0979-966-615 or 0960-296009. Or you come in person at NPF Building, Cairo Road, 3rd and 5th floor. Or email Gideon Robert University at gmail.com. Gideon Robert University, breaking new frontiers in higher education. Gideon Robert. Welcome back. This is a Gideon Robert University, my school program. And today we are looking at this new program that the institution has introduced and it's a uh, public speaking 
um, training uh, program and today we are looking at public speaking ethics and this is for everyone because everyone at some point you have an audience that you need to talk to so you must learn the ethics of a public speaking well doctor as we went on the break you brought up something um, in, in, in line with uh, one of the um, the ethics that people don't really focus on or pay attention to and you mentioned the reputation of, of certain words in our speech. Yes, because that has to do with uh, habits, mm -hmm. that sometimes we develop habits, you know, mm -hmm. uh, where you use a uh, certain word unnecessarily, mm -hmm. you, you, you repeat it unnecessarily. I, I've seen someone repeating the word like maybe actually. Mm -hmm. So you say actually we want to do this mm -hmm. because actually what actually. we want to do actually mm -hmm. is, you, you know, know, so you keep on repeating the same word. You know, you I know? went to town, and, uh, you know, I, uh, and, I found and, uh, him, yeah, you know. And stuff like that. <laughs> yes. But you'd notice that that has become a habit when someone repeats a word and they saw it because Maybe they take it as a swag. Not really. Most because of the time, they don't even notice it. They mm -hmm. don't even realize it. So it, um, it, it, it actually uh, doesn't come out well in public speaking. And it's, it's very good and important for someone to start working on that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we usually have, um, people usually have different kinds of habits and uh, it could be the words that you're using and uh, things like that. But it's very important to take note of that. Remember, uh, in public speaking, there's what we call articulation, which mm -hmm. has to do with uh, the clarity of speech, That's speaking right. clearly so that you are ahead properly. Mm -hmm. So uh, some of those habits, like uh, the repetition of words or the, the, the use of certain words wrongly, you mm -hmm. just use a word that is not supposed to be in that particular sentence and you just use it, may just um, make your speech not to be very clear and some people may not understand exactly what you're talking about. So that is very important. Yeah, I mentioned that I will be looking at not adhering to you know some of these ethics of public speaking. Mm -hmm. What are the effects of not adhering to that? Uh, first of all, if um, depending on um, what kind of um, ethics someone breaks, mm -hmm. you know, or doesn't follow, uh, each of those has a certain effect on your on your public speaking or your speech or your mm -hmm. presentation in general. Yeah. Either it could be that you, you will offend an audience because of uh, maybe what you said or how you said it or certain actions that you made uh, as, you are, as you are speaking, mm -hmm. you know. So whatever it may be, it, you, you, you could end up um, offending an audience. Remember I said that sometimes ethics can even do with uh, maybe you dressed in a way that offended an audience. They thought what well, it was unethical, it was not right mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. Or maybe it could be that you said something you know, that uh, the audience uh, was not uh, happy with and, and, and things like that. So you can offend an audience. And uh, if you offend an audience, it means uh, the audience don't want to listen to what you say because they are offended, mm -hmm. you know. It can also be that uh, uh, you cannot be accepted by an audience. Mm -hmm. And you know that public speaking is all about an audience. No audience, no public speaking. You know, what makes me a public speaker is the audience. Mm -hmm. That is why um, great speakers who, are, who, ha, who have um, uh, what we call courtesy, when they speak, they say something like, uh, thank you for listening to me, mm -hmm. or thank you for, for paying attention, thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. You know why? Why are you doing that? It's because you are not a speaker if there is no audience. That's true. And so the audience is very important to you as a speaker. So you can't afford to... Uh, to lose your audience. Mm -hmm. So the, the audience would accept you uh, so much if you also adhere to um, ethics of public speaking. But if you don't, you disrespect them or you do things that are offensive to them or they don't like, uh, things they don't like, then you lose your audience and that's not good. But also, uh, it also adds to your, 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 your respect, the way people would look at you, uh, the kind of um, uh, you know the kind of uh, person they will look at when they see you speaking because of the way you handle your speaking, uh, how organized you are, and uh, the way you just bring out your presentation. So it also adds to how the audience is going to look at you, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a certain um, level of um, the same kind of value that they just place on you as, as a speaker, and that is very important. That you are smart, the way you speak, and uh, you know people love that. So it, that, that is another benefit that you can have. So if you don't do that, 
uh, it actually have negative effects, you know. There is also um, the issue of um, uh, some ethics may, uh, if they are not followed, may cause uh, your speech not to be properly heard by your audience because they may pay attention to what they are seeing you doing in, the, in front of them mm -hmm. and then miss out on uh, the, the points you want to speak to, mm -hmm. you know, to, 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 to them. Uh, it could be that uh, probably you, there are certain things you are saying or you are doing or the way you are dressed or the way you are, you know, just your actions can cause people to switch to, to what you are, uh, they are seeing than to what you are, you are saying. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I do remember a speaker going to a platform and uh, they have, you know, most places in a, in a st on a stage, they have stairs. Mm -hmm. Uh, like on the sides, mm. and and this speaker just decided to jump up from the front, mm. you know, and some people that was like, why can't he just go, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> what? If, right yeah, part. what if he falls or some, mm, something exactly. like that? So you find people would like pay attention to mm. people are easily distracted. Okay. So sometimes lack of ethics can actually distract, but also generally, um, you you want to be uh, accepted as a speaker. So it is very important that you. Listen, listen and follow uh, ethical standards. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we are running out of time now. Let's uh, let's talk about this newly introduced course mm -hmm. right here at Gideon Roberts University. What other things will be tackled in these short courses? Well, a lot. Apart from uh, ethics, we are going to look at we are going to look at ethics as um, as, as a part of this uh, short course, a two weeks course, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, uh, two weeks, two hours sessions every day, and uh, one of the the topics we're going to look at is um, ethics of public speaking, meaning the do's and don'ts of public speaking. Mm -hmm. But we are also going to look at um, uh, things such as what makes speaking or a speech or a presentation effective. Mm -hmm. So those uh, part, uh, important uh, things that somebody has to take note of in order to make a speech effective. Effective, when we say effective, what we simply mean is uh, a speech that uh, produces results that when you speak, always you have a, a, a purpose while you're speaking and you want the audience to respond accordingly. So what makes a speech to be heard? But also we're going to look at uh, what causes the fear of public speaking and how do we conquer the fear of public speaking. All so right. we'll look at that. And then we are going to look at speech presentation mm -hmm. and speech writing. How do you write a speech? What is involved in speech writing? Mm -hmm. And uh, many other things. Okay, so uh, the, this, uh, the program starts on Monday, the 11th of September, is it? It's actually the 18th of September. Oh, the 18th of September. All right, our viewers, uh, there you have it. Uh, the, this uh, short course is commencing right here at Gideon Robert University. We'll be looking at uh, public speaking ethics and much more that you need to learn as a public speaker. So come 18th of September, right here at Gideon Robert University, we'll be enrolling limited places uh, spaces available so just make your way to npf building at cairo road on the fifth and the third floor of npf building that's where gideon robert university is and enroll for this short course only two weeks and you will be the best public speaker ever well thank you so much for having been with us i was looking at uh, public speaking ethics and to help me d discuss this uh, was uh, Dr. K. Omoyunda. From me, Esther Mwanza, saying goodnight. But University is now enrolling for the January 2018 intake in the following faculties. The School of Education, BA, Adult Education, Early Childhood Education, Primary Education, and Special Education. In the School of Business, we offer Bachelor of Accounts, Bachelor of Science in Logistics and Transport, and many more. School of Agriculture, Bachelor of Science in Agriculture, General. Bachelor of Science in Agriculture, Animal Science. Bachelor of Science in Agriculture, Economics and Agribusiness. School of Humanities and Social Sciences. Bachelor in Development Studies. Bachelor in Mass Communication. 